Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We are doing our watch along to Turning Red by Disney Pixar. If you are watching this on YouTube, you are going to see a cut down version of our reaction because it would be piracy if we showed you the whole thing, and YouTube wouldn't allow that anyway. So you'll see a cut down version of our reaction. Uh, we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture in picture. However, if you want to watch the whole thing with us uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Jabby Kawai, where you can watch the whole movie with us, but you will need your own. Disney Plus subscription so you can watch the movie, open it up in an adjacent window to our reaction. And it's like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And if you're watching this on Patreon already, thanks so much for supporting us here. Appreciate ya. What, <laughs> what are you doing? That. This thing. Yeah, I was like, what are, are you having a fit? Like, what the hell is this? You know, the STS. I, STS? Uh, F, F, B, F, B, V. BTS. BTS, that's the one. How many people thought I messed that up by accident? I did. You thought I messed it up by accident? For reals? I did it on purpose. Everyone knows what BTS is. <laughs> that's the Chinese group. Oh my god, so rude. How dare you? <laughs> Why people would be like, what? <laughs> Why is that rude? <laughs> Everyone knows they're from Korea, okay? Why is that rude? <laughs> Jeez. Aren't all Asians from China? Sorry for the rude jokes. I'm ha we're both half Asian, so we can make those jokes. I'm Maylin Lee, and ever since I turned 13... Oh my god, the Tamagotchi! My own moves, 24-7, 365. I wear what I want, say what I want, and I will not hesitate to do a spontaneous cartwheel if I feel so moved. Mm-hmm. Oh, about uh, that hustle. Am I right? <laughs> oh, she's got the same balance and grace you do. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> ready to change the world? So ready. I was born to do this. Let's burn this place to the ground! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I guess you could call me an overachieving dork narc. I accept and embrace all labels. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, the bucket hat. My mom cuts his hair at the salon, and I felt it. It's very soft. <laughs> 99 Australian tour with the Girl I Love Your Jeans remix. Oh, um. G mirror, I'll guard you with my life. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What year is this set in? 1990, no, 2000. I forgot exactly, but it's like late 90s, early 2000s. Well, it said 99 on the CD, so it's early 2000s. Yeah. Like most adults, I have responsibilities. Hey, Bart. Hey, Lisa. Let's do this. I mean, for a second, I thought they were wielding some bow staffs. Oh, yeah. Ever since, the Red Panda has blessed our family with good fortune and prosperity. And it can bless yours, too. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen anything like this. Give me five. Yeah. Come on, Dad's making dinner. Ooh. Oh, I was wondering. I was like, is Dad still in the picture? Oh. That's so epic. <laughs> Oh my god, it looks yummy. Sounds like a very, like, water for chocolate sort of vibe to the whole <laughs> thing. Okay. Oh lord. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> face. Do you want a snack? Cool, great, thanks. Don't look at the notebook. Don't look at the notebook. Don't. Is this your Mom? homework? Oh. Don't. Oh my. What you put this? Do not. Huh? What? Mom. Oh. <laughs> Who is he? Did he do these things to you? No. <laughs> it's just made up, Mom. <laughs> it's not real. <sighs> that hat. Is that the sketchy clerk from the Daisy Mom? <gasps> Mom. No. Uh oh. Oh my God. <laughs> He doesn't even know she exists. Yeah. This is what happens when you don't wear sunblock and do drugs all day. <laughs> She's just a sweet, innocent child. How dare you take advantage of her? Mom! No! No! 
It looks like a mermaid. Oh. <laughs> what a wicked <laughs> Oh my god. Mommy. I'm so sorry. <gasps> you are her pride and joy, so act like it! Jesus Christ. Oh my god. This will never happen again. It's getting dark. <laughs> Jeez. Did somebody ask for a miracle? <laughs> Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. <laughs> that was in my real form. Best you die fried. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's a lot of pandas. <gasps> oh no. Did she wish for this? Hello, I'm a furry. <laughs> oh, Breakfast is yummy. ready. That's cute. Mm. No sugar. No <laughs> sugar. Oh shit. Coming. Wow. Mm. Big red and fluffy. What's going on, honey? Are you sick? Is it a fever? A stomach ache? Chills? Constipation? Oh. Wait, is it that? Did the He walks away. He backs away. <laughs> Don't worry, Mei Mei. I'll get everything you need. Mommy's here. Jin! Jin! It's happening! <laughs> Oh. oh no! I'm a gross red monster! <laughs> stop it! Stop talking! Maybe I, I know this is upsetting, but we are going to get through this together. I have ibuprofen, vitamin B, a hot water bottle, and pads. Jesus! <laughs> like a year supply, Costco's <laughs> pads. <laughs> God. I'll just go to sleep, and when I wake up, this will all be over. <laughs> what the? Okay. Deep breaths. There we go. <laughs> Oh! You'll figure this out, Lee. Better than Just being a calm, giant red panda, right? Adult, you totally are. You got this. What's this analogous for? Uh, puberty. Okay, I thought that's what it was, but I'm like, okay, is that is it? Is it the obvious? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's your lunch. I packed extra snacks a and herbal tea for cramps. It helps relax your. I got it. Thank you. Bye. I guess I don't remember the experience of like, if I just stay calm, puberty is not going to affect me. Like, I don't remember that feeling at all. No. I mean, I think that's just to, to do with this. The this, magic? This, the magic, okay. yeah. But I think it's like, oh, you know, you're, you're going through changes that you can't really control, control and that you don't really understand right now. Oh, what's with the toque? Uh, bad hair day. Did you like work out this morning? I got you, girl. May, uh, we gotta talk. Okay. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler is an insecure jerkwad. Words were exchanged. Slightly uncomfortable secrets were revealed. End of story. She's like a guy's. Oh. Or, or, is that a guy? <laughs> Devin, my precious manly man. I banish you. Literally go away. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> you want a piece of me, huh? Come, Come here! Later. Yeah. George, Rush yeah, that's right. Oh, God. God. <laughs> I gotta go. I'll see you at lunch. Okay. Oh my God, <laughs> she does look like she has her period. <laughs> What's with her? What's with your face? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, this isn't happening. I can't hold it.
Dang, she is really a helicopter. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mimi, do you think her mom knows? Like, this is something that the, everyone <laughs> yeah, in the nice. family they goes through? They did that record for a dream shot with a camera strapped to her. <laughs> <laughs> People didn't say that in 2000, did they? <laughs> no? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, right? They said it, I don't remember. I think we were just learning that in AOL Instant Messenger at the time. Yeah, 2000. Yeah, but no one said it out loud yet. We were just saying it in text. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> She can't help herself. <laughs> Can I hide? She runs a little bit like a titan. <laughs> Is that, that's what they're called, right? In yeah, Tech yeah, on yeah. Titan. Mommy's here. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> what is it? What? What? <gasps> it's happened already? <laughs> it's time. Why, why wouldn't they give her a heads up about this? this Sometimes is... parents don't do that, though. And then you're like, wait, what? She ballooned into a huge fox <laughs> or whatever that creature is. What is she supposed to be? Uh, is it, isn't it a red panda? Or a panda, sorry. Tap if you can hear us. Look for yes, two for no! We were so worried. <laughs> I like we this thought one. you died of embarrassment. You need more pads? I brought extra. Get that! Fortune's coming to Toronto! What? Ah! <laughs> ah! Had friends and now bad bodies. It's true, but they don't turn my tummy the way you do. I've never met nobody. Turn back. Oh, man. You're you. Something feels different. Abby, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've made a breakthrough. Deforestation. Sad orangutan. <laughs> Your second place spelling bee trophy. <laughs> the important thing is you try. You spelled your little butt off. First place in our hearts. I love how her encouragement is still angry. I know. She's my favorite. <gasps> so cute. <laughs> when I start to get emotional, all I do is imagine the people I love most in the whole world. Why on <laughs> earth do you want to go so badly? <laughs> There's no way she could keep her panda in. And, and $200? For what? Who do they think they are? That is expensive. I don't know. I've, I haven't bought concert tickets in a while. Me, it's your mother. I'm not here. <laughs> I'm on my way with reinforcements. No, I can't. Who's that voice? I don't know. I have a simple guess. Who? I think it's Michelle Yeoh. Uh, yeah, maybe. Mine called it stripper music. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Please. Please. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Little mama's girl. Okay, whack him. Hit him really hard. Get him. <laughs> you are the cutest thing ever. Come on, please. Yeah, please. Wait, I love it. I'll give you anything. Money? My kidney. My soul. Yeah. 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 Those are $200. Dang. <laughs> Rich kids, man. I'm loving all the like Canadian terms. It's so cute. Check out number 12. He's got delts for days. Forget that. I need lunch. I'm starting to black out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so intense. Miriam, I mean, she's a nice girl, but maybe she's slowing you down. You really don't have to come. Don't be silly. We're already on the way. But I don't want you to. Oh gosh, no. Oh, you better bounce Not the right aunties. Now. 
Get out of there! She's lost weight. <laughs> what up, peeps? <laughs> what are you wearing? Hey, Tyler. Happy birthday. I'm paying for the red panda. Not this garbage. Deal's off. Wait, can garbage do this? <clears throat> Did you know she'd be in that outfit? No. <laughs> you knew? Yeah. As soon, as soon as I saw the silhouette. If we can't all go, then, then none of us, us should go. Just turn into the panda for your friends. Let's hear it for the oh, yes, yes. Hey. <laughs> Mimi needs a strong hand now more than ever. Don't let her out of your sight. I won't, mother. I think she was in Daredevil, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. That actress. You're obsessed. Yep, I was right. She was in Daredevil. I was like, why is her face so familiar? <laughs> I realized she was the villain. Oh. Oh no. She's gonna find everything. I knew it. I knew it. <sighs> like she, did, our main character. Like, why didn't she? She's a twelve-year-old kid. We did it. We are seeing. Oh, I won't Hey, has anyone seen May? That looks way cooler than Canada actually looks. <laughs> I mean, Canada is pretty nice, but I've never seen it look like that. It's happening, Robert Jr. You're finally gonna meet your daddy! Oh my god! <laughs> what did she say? May? She said her Tamagotchi is gonna meet. No, I know that, but okay, never mind. The 18th Toronto! Uh, this says Toledo. What? Oh no! Four towns the same night as the ritual? No! The same night? Forget your money and forget you! Creepy temple, you freak! <laughs> oh, shit. No. Not so cute anymore. We just wanted to see Four Town. Four Town! You manipulated her for a bunch of tacky delinquents? No, she wanted to. Don't you blame her. She is a good girl, and you've taken advantage of her. May, tell her. Stand up to your mom. What? Dude! Mm. It's almost time! <laughs> the red moon is about to begin. Mimi, go get ready. Yes, mother. Jin, huh? help clear the table. Uh -huh. <laughs> the women of the family are so scary. Oh. oh no, he's oh he's gonna see and he's gonna be like, go to the concert, have fun. <laughs> Five seconds and he was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to see more. People have all kinds of sides to them, May. Make room for it. L live with it. For as long as the red moon shines, uh, uh, the astral realm will be open. And this circle is the door. It's quite a perfect circle. I know, he did that at one go. Yeah. Presumably he's done this more than once. From where it came! Dang, okay. What is no! over you? I'm coming out! I'm going to the concert! I know the mom's gonna become uh -oh. a, a red panda. How could she do this to her own mother? Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, no! She's back! Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Four town forever. Four town Four forever. Four town forever! Tyler? Uh, no, Tyler. <laughs> Your mom must have gone nuclear. Who cares? What's she gonna do? Ground me? <laughs> <laughs> oh God shit. damn! It's like a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> like her father wasn't kidding when he said she was a big panda. I love that. There's five of them, oh, and it's, it's called like, Four Town. It's very much like N Sync, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. It's like NSYNC and BTS. 
Or Backstreet. Yeah, all of it. O-Town. New kids on the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it. How is the U.S. government not getting involved at this point? Like, it's a big... <laughs> well, it's in Canada, first of all. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I guess the Can Canadian government doesn't have a, a military, exactly. right? Well, yeah, they do. <laughs> like, we don't harm animals, especially not red pandas that are in danger of being extinct. I, I, why isn't the Canadian military involved is my question. <laughs> Where are you? Maybe! <laughs> oh my god. Also, check out her hair. <laughs> God. Oh my. Go home! Where are your parents? Get some clothes on! <laughs> <laughs> this isn't you! Yes, it is! It's me! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Her panda is so tiny in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where's Jim? Jim! Hey! Keep her in the circle! Oh, wow. Stop! Oh, my God! Is this bothering you? Get down, money maker! Destroy her with their big butt! Stop singing now! Ladies, Jim, are some, 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 some. It doesn't matter what song. Have the concert. Let's go. Sorry, I'm not perfect. Sorry, I'm not good enough. And sorry, I'll never be like you. God damn. <laughs> in the circle still? Yeah. Still in the circle. Well, now we just need BTS to s or NSYNC to sing. For town. Sunny, give me strength. Oh. <gasps> Poor man. Why is her panda so big by comparison? <laughs> What is this, Naruto? What's going on? <laughs> Come on, aunties, let's go. Why is he crying? I don't know. My mom. <laughs> Isn't true. Let's get the lead out. Ladies. <laughs> Let's get the hell out. <laughs> May keeping the panda? It's her life. Now move. That seemed easy. Yeah, well, because they... For them, it's not a dilemma. Oh, it just seemed like... I guess. And maybe they haven't use the panda as often as she has and she has a deeper connection to them sure i'm sorry so don't hold back for anyone the farther you go the prouder i'll be now what no special words from sun yi Life's 
been a lot. People still talk about Pandapocalypse 2002. <laughs> Things hungry all the time. <laughs> Eat up, little one. Oh, you're so hungry. Much, much, much. What? Mr. Gal had to put her panda in something. You should see Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> what was Grandma's? I missed it. What was Grandma's? This is a four, oh. four town. And the only one that's home to the great red panda. <laughs> 50 million, wow. A hundred million. Was it? We've all got an inner beast. We've all got a messy, loud, weird part of ourselves hidden away. And a lot of us never let it out. But I did. How about you? Aww. That was a very, very sweet movie. I'll tell you, like, I I mean, I had high hopes just because I really enjoyed this director's work on the short film, Bao. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. It was a very unconventional Pixar film. This one? Yeah. Or, yeah. This one, yeah. It was very, un I mean. Well, it still kind of follows the, the Pixar tropes, right? Which is like, oh, let's help kids deal with difficult things. What is the difficult thing here? It's not just puberty. It's something else. It's like, I was wondering Growing if it was like up, I was wondering if it was like ADHD as well. Like I was just anything at all where okay. you're you're going through a change and you're learning about yourself and you're kind of like becoming an individual and moving away from like I guess the idea of what your family wants you to be and as you're growing into the person that you want to become or the person that you are becoming and a certain level of distance yeah. has to you know, has to happen. I was wondering if it was also maybe perhaps analogous to coming out of the closet. Yeah. Well. I mean, there was literally a part where her whole family is trying to hold her back in the temple from coming out yeah, yeah. into the world. And she's like, I'm, I'm just going to get out of here. Yeah. It was really, really sweet. And I, I enjoyed it. Although there were certain elements where I was like, they are really hitting the nail on the head a lot or just like being very on the nose with it, you know? And I guess maybe you kind of have to be for maybe kids who are watching this and like you know going hey it's okay to be who you are whether you know yeah. you're going through puberty or you know you want to come out or you know you want to do the things that you want to do and, and be your own person like it's totally okay i like the animation style uh i liked the the characters especially the little korean girl abby I thought she was hilarious. You're the one that you really liked. Yeah. There, so you never heard of um, Angry Asian Lady, the no. the the, me, the cartoon? No, I um, never. Angry little Asian girl. That's what it's no. called. No. Where she's just always mad. I want to be a people person until people ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in a new tab so we can bring that up. Yeah. No, I've never. I, I've never seen this meme, I and I I love me a good little Asian meme. But speaking about the Asianness, I thought that they, you know, obviously the the director. I don't know if she wrote this. She's Chinese, I think, um, and so like it definitely felt relatable in that sense. You know, like it 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 felt like it was Asian, but also it wasn't. I liked how Toronto was shown to be this really diverse place, which I've been to Toronto. It rings true with me. It is diverse. You know, it's yeah. super diverse. And I, I liked that there was that representation there in the movie as well. Yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. I think the only thing is like, sometimes I kind of wish it didn't feel so much like an after school special, but ultimately it, it, was, it was a fun ride. And I got the emotional thing that I wanted. Like I watched Bao, the the short film that the director made mm -hmm. and that short killed me i think she must have some sort of thing with her relationship with her own mother or something because well that much is obvious yes yeah. i see it as a recurring theme in her work and in the short, I was just like, it really spoke to me because it reminded me of my relationship with my own overbearing tiger mom. And so, you know, I didn't get as much of that here, but it was still really sweet. You didn't get as much of what? The connection. I didn't feel the connection as much. The connection to what? Her mom. 
between her and her mom? Like you didn't yeah, see that in this movie. Okay, gotcha. In this movie, I feel right. like it was kind of like told to us more, or maybe I just it didn't it was, hit it was, me it was as said deeply. instead of shown. Yeah. Okay. Whereas in Bao, there weren't really any words, but I felt it. You know, I felt that connection between, like, the mom really loved. If you guys haven't seen the short, you should definitely watch it. But like, the mom really loves her I'm, son. I'm pretty and sure then, everybody's and, seen the short. And the son's yeah. like moving away from her. Right. So, I, I would say that uh, with regards to a comparison between Bao and Turning Red, Bao in its few minutes of story hit me a lot harder than the entirety of Turning Red. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I think that. There's a certain magical quality that I have come to expect with Pixar. And having been following their films for years since mm -hmm. the 90s, I don't know that it's actually been as consistent as my heart tells me it is. And my heart tells me it is because, you know, of that introductory phase of Pixar films when it was always a magical film. It always yeah. had that magical quality when it was Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. Even Bugs Life, even though I didn't love that film. And then Finding Nemo. Like, there was a series of films at the outset and they were all very magical. And then somewhere along the way, it started to shift and it wasn't quite as magical and it wasn't quite as... It didn't have the same quality and level that it had before. And it's like, it's come and gone. It's been hit and miss over the years. Uh, and so I have the films in front of me. I remember liking Cars, Toy Story, Up, Coco, Monsters, Inc., yeah. Inside Out, uh, The Incredibles, and Finding Nemo is like amongst my favorites. Onward yeah. made me cry. And I did not like Brave. I did not like Ratatouille. I liked Brave. Uh, but Brave, Brave was something, and Toy Story 2 and 3 I, I liked. The first thing I thought of in looking at this was actually Brave. Because the mom turned into a, um, a, a bear, bear or something like yes. that. Yes. And I was just like, okay, so where's this headed? Like, because you got, you got the main character turning into an animal. And that was a fleeting thought. I just, I, was sort of, I didn't even need to mention that. It was a fleeting thought that came up because one of the main characters turns into an animal. Uh, but in this, it was different because she could jump back and forth. It was very different from what I was expecting it to be because it's this very public thing that everybody knows about. Whereas in Monsters, Inc., in Toy Story, it's a secret. Yeah. You know, no one's supposed to know about this thing until it really needs to be known, right? Like at the end of Toy Story when Sid finds out the t toys are alive or Monsters, Inc., like it's sort of... You know what I'm saying? Okay, I don't have yeah. to make that point any clear. Luca had something similar. There was a magical element there, right? Because mm -hmm. they were m mermen or something. This was probably the most modernized Pixar film that I can think of outside of Soul. Like, Soul had the jazz music and whatnot, yeah. right? This, this like... Because even Luca, which is set in Italy, like, it didn't feel as modern as this for some reason. Like, this was set literally in Toronto with the hip-hop, but not the hip-hop, but the pop music that, like, we grew up with. And it's still, it's still a little retro, right? Because it's like... 2002 that's 20 years ago even I think though it that, feels know, very current i think that after a certain age it doesn't feel that long ago it's like it just feels like yesterday well yeah, yeah. and and i mean it's that's a good point too even, which the thing that i really enjoyed at the end was when you know they go to the astral realm and she finds her mom and her mom's this teenager well like she's still dealing with yeah that was a, that was an interesting spin on what you typically find with that thing which is usually your what you're coming to discover is you're supposed to take care of your younger self. Your the, inner child. Your inner yeah. child, the therapy thing. This was like she had to take care of her mom, which like that almost did a number on me emotionally because I've had to deal with that in certain respects. Not with my mom, but with my dad. And so that was something that was very, very interesting and peculiar in a cool way. Yeah. What I'm trying to get at is, you know, Pixar typically has this like magical quality, typical in the sense of what I was saying earlier, where like that introductory phase of Pixar films, there was that magical element to it, right? Here for all of like, it didn't have that magical quality that I was looking for being this film that is largely based in magic. Right. You know, it's like there was something missing and I, I'm having a hard time articulating it. I did enjoy a lot of moments and I enjoyed the young Korean girl. I thought she was cool. But there was some kind of disconnect for me and I can't quite figure out what it is. And I was thinking about that critic that you had mentioned the other day who got railed and he got, like he got put in the in the stocks <laughs> yeah. for having an opinion. Uh, he's like, I don't relate to this movie. Well, I think because he was, he was kind of... I didn't read the. I didn't read his review. I actually didn't read his re review either. Yeah. But apparently, it seemed like he was implying 
saying that he couldn't relate to it because it was too Asian or it was too Chinese. Uh, that didn't bother me. That, uh, I mean, I, obviously being half Asian, it didn't bother. But I, if, if anything, I wondered why it wasn't more, more Asian. Yeah, I could have gone. I actually could have gone with more Asian. Yeah. Like I really enjoyed the little bits. I loved the aunties. I always love a good auntie. To like be fair. something as simple as um. Okay, so we established that the walls are thin in this house, yeah. right? Th- that is damn near a Chekhov's gun because it only comes up the one time where she can hear her mom in yeah. the next room. But her mom can't hear all the kids singing when, you know, and oh dancing. Oh, God, yeah, I know. I know and my so, mom would have been like, what are you doing? Yeah. And and so I, I like I'm, I was wondering about that, but the Asian element that I'm trying to get to is no one was asked to take their to take their shoes off, and everyone everyone came into the apartment with their shoes oh, off. I didn't even notice yeah, that. Yeah, th- but you're absolutely right. Yeah. And the mom was super nice, and I was like, I have not met too many Asian moms that are that nice, but I haven't spent any time in Toronto with Asian moms. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there are. My mom was the cool mom. Everybody, everybody liked her, but like, yeah, I mean, we had issues, <laughs> me and her. But you know those like uh, in New York City outside, like the I think it's the New York Library where the like the lions that are out there uh-huh. that are like very kind of scary, but they're cool to look at. Yeah, that's an Asian mom. That's my mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like my mom is kind. Of, it's like my mom was in someone like you could just like. Well, not, if you were a, if, if, if you were a baby, she was very sweet and warm to you. Yeah. Once you got past the age of two, it's like, why aren't you doing your homework? You know, <laughs> go make a house or something like. You know, or something Be useful. Some, why aren't you yeah, earning go, money yet? Yeah, exactly. Why aren't you earning money yet? Go get your degree, <laughs> mom. I'm three. I don't care. Go get a college degree. You know, it's like these absurd these absurd requests start coming up. It's like you're not even a, you're not even into your teens yet, right? Yeah. And so, like for most of my life, that's how I remember my mom is very intense. And so to see this mom, I'm like, okay, maybe it's too cliche to have that mom. And maybe the p- part of the point is sort of like with Three Idiots, the Indian film. I know that there's Americans who are watching this who have no idea what Three Idiots is. Uh, it's an Indian film that was um, very successful and very inspiring. But they were showing parents doing things in that movie that you don't typically find with Indian parents in real life. Mm-hmm. And so I, my thought was, well, maybe part of the point is to introduce an idea to the Indian audience to go, here's how you could behave. Right. And so I thought maybe that's what they were going for. But then hardcore, crazy Asian mom came out at the end. I'm like, that's the that's thing I've been looking the for the, yeah. this entire movie. I'm like, that's that, I think we should have had that earlier. That's but, the mom. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I wonder if maybe they kind of toned that down so, it, so she wasn't like this really scary, awful character because we still need to care about her. We still need to love her. But I, I wonder if... They had kind of leaned into that more and maybe gone a little bit more stereotypical, right? And just kind of really leaned into that kind of strict Asian mom and then to kind of show the reverse at the end, which is like, no, but I, I do love you. Like, I do yeah. I do want the best for you. That I think that would have, like, absolutely yeah. crushed me at yeah. the end. I think that's the way you... Yeah, because the thing about it is you, you start out with this sort of stern woman and then she just gets scarier over the course yeah. of the film until you find out where all this is coming from. Well, yeah, because I, I remember as a child, um, as a teenager as well, I found my mom incredibly scary, incredibly intimidating. Nothing I could do would ever please her. And right. then as I grew older from her, we gained more distance and uh, we still love each other very much. But I came to realize that actually all of that kind of scary, overbearing, strict behavior, that loudness mm-hmm. was just her way of saying, I love you because she didn't know another way, <laughs> you sure. know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, like I personally, I mean, this is me kind of opening up. I don't remember my mom saying I love you to me until I turned 21, 22 years old when I was out on my own. Yeah. Then she started saying it. Similar. And it yeah. wasn't even because I was moving out. It was because she needed something from me. <laughs> 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 They're just hilarious to me now because my mom is like the mafia. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, like I, I was kind of, for some reason, I, I know it's stereotypical, but I was kind of hoping for that more, you know? And, and so, you know, I, I think it, it's almost, I, I almost liken it to, and forgive me if I say anything remotely ignorant to any, uh, in anyone's opinion right now, but uh, most of my friends are black. And when I got done watching Soul, I actually enjoyed it. And then I talked to some of my black friends one of them loved it, 
two of them hated it. And I, so I was like, why did you guys hate it? And they were saying, it's not, a, it's not really a black movie. And they had their reasons. And one of the things that they didn't like was that the guy was obsessed with pizza. And they were like, pizza is an Italian food. We like soul food. Why is he eating pizza? Why is he obsessed with that? And I tried to argue, and I'm like, well, maybe it's because they were afraid of the stereotype of soul food. Right, yeah. And that's why they avoided it. And so likewise here, maybe they were, and I'm like, whatever your opinions on soul, I mean, I respect it. Maybe here they were avoiding the stereotypical thing initially because it's because it's stereotypical and it's like, we're not all like that, but it's like, yeah. I think a lot of Asian moms are like that. It's a, it's a, it's a stereotype for a reason. It is, this, this exists for, I experienced it. You know, my yeah. mom was really intense growing up. Education, education, education. It's like super, super strict. I mean, they kind of showed that a little bit with her being this like overachieving, must get straight A's type of person. But like, yeah, you didn't, you had a sense of the pressure maybe that she was under, but it wasn't overtly stated because it just looked like yeah. oh her mom's yeah. kind of cool they just, have a nice relationship just a little bit more joy luck club in there you know yeah, just, a, just a wee bit some, you know some twins being left behind that, that, being that, separated that feels from... real you know <laughs> it's yeah. like we just needed a little bit more trauma yeah exactly you know yes it was exactly just more more than your your usual just traumatic experience but, of going no. through puberty and everything changing and you don't know why your body's changing and, and doing all these things you know now <laughs> the the aspect of you have this calling uh, and this is who you are and your mom is trying to guide you away from that it's like no but this is who I am yeah. and this is what I enjoy and appreciate I can relate to that that's definitely but, relatable but, yeah but, but for whatever reason like in watching it there was no part of me that was connecting with that. And I'm wondering why. Yeah. Because like, I'm someone who wanted to pursue the entertainment industry and my mom really didn't want me to do that. She wanted me to get a college degree and have a job with health benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And so like follow that very like traditional route. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I could, there was something missing in the communication to the audience for me uh, where I didn't, I wasn't able to relate my own experiences to the movie, and I think that's where the disconnect was coming from. Uh, I wish that there was a, a way they could have... It, it's like it got caught up in this panda thing, which was like a very ambiguous catch-all idea. It's like, it could be whatever you want. It's like, no, but like if you give it more specificity, it's easier for people to, I think, connect with. I think the ambiguity of what the meaning of Turning Red was is what kind of hurt the movie for me personally. Maybe. You yeah, know? I mean, I, I, I do. I do totally understand and and i think i agree with you on that sense of like i didn't really feel that emotional hook like yeah. if you compare it to a recent disney animation like encanto mm -hmm. um which was also very culturally specific yeah. and magical i thought that encanto did a really great job with just like making you feel connected emotionally throughout that movie and that i movie, love that movie. that movie killed me yeah like i laughed i cried uh multiple times throughout yeah. the movie went through the entire gamut this was still an extremely entertaining fun funny movie but i think i was just really hoping for more of that emotional connection, which is something that I really love yeah. about a lot of the Disney and Pixar animations that I watch. It almost had me when she had to find her mom in the bamboo forest. That almost had me. Oh, I, was, I, I, it had me. Yeah, that almost got me because like there was something about that that I, I feel like I can connect with, but it was like I, I had to... I don't know because because of everything leading up to it I wasn't connecting with as much as I wanted to when that moment came it's like oh if only there was more building up to this in the way that I needed this would have hit me harder because they were they were trying to say that it was this sort of mythical thing that they all had inside of them and I'm like okay so now, my brain is constantly trying to identify what this means and maybe I'm I'm trying too hard to like make this movie reason with me but like if it was just a message about coming out of the closet let's say Embracing who you Embr are. Like, let's just say it was that, yeah. right? It's, an it's analogous for people who are in the closet and they're coming out. Like, even though that's not my experience, I can empathize with that and it'll hit me hard, you know? And I know that from a f***ing Facebook video that made me cry. And if it was about embracing, like, your passion, you know, that's also a... It's a I mean, that's a 
you know, a message that we, we hear a lot, but like, I can also identify with that. It's like, that is my experience as, as someone who is embracing who they really, what their, what their calling is deep down inside and not this other traditional lane. They needed to pick a, a more direct lane and they wanted this whole thing with the family all turning into pandas and whatnot. Then it very easily, it should be the message is we all had a dream, but we abandoned it in favor of the traditional route or something like that. It's just too ambiguous well, for yeah, me. Yeah, maybe. Or, I mean, I do like the message about embracing the darkness within yourself and the and the messiness. what does that mean can you give me the, the, the like pretend i'm a three what does that mean it just means that we're not perfect people and there's this desire to be perfect and to uh, be the perfect daughter to be the perfect wife to be the perfect mother but our humanness is that we are not perfect our humanness is that we also have dark emotions that we you know Whatever, whatever. I like that message in theory, but I don't feel like it did a good job of getting that to me. If that makes any sense. Sure. Like it, it, they, I remember them overtly saying that. Yeah, but it's I'm like, like embrace, embrace all parts of yourself, and I think that is important because I think a lot of the time, especially in today's world, we're like, no, reject the negativity, good vibes only. Mm, you know, gotcha. that kind of okay, thing. Okay, okay. And it's like, no, like you can embrace your big fluffy awkward panda I, w I will say this though as for a film that i didn't like fall in love with i could watch this again i could put it on again and, and try to like dissect it further or just enjoy it again like because there are definitely amusing moments <laughs> yeah and, and it's so really like funny. It, it's for the most part inoffensive like there's stuff the stuff where she's shaking her ass at the end was a little bit was pushing it a little bit i thought i'm like this is a family movie but, but yeah it's also showing like you know you're going through change and sexuality is part of that and and a lot of the time you know parents like oh i want to keep you as my little kid forever and it's like no nah, but i'm not anymore i'm out there i like boys or girls or whoever i want to shake my butt and i don't think that's as do the thing provocative today as it used to be i think parents are more equipped today than they were tw just 20 15 20 years ago yeah i think so um probably. and so i don't care for that is the is the short of it okay not so, in my kid movie okay so like okay for instance like love simon I think it was kind of treated as this like breakthrough movie. And I'm like, there's nothing really that brave about that now. If you did that movie 20 years ago, it'd be brave. I think we're in a, we're in an era now where we are ready to embrace that. So it's not really brave anymore. Right. You know but what I there mean? There isn't, there isn't an abundance of that no, content out there. But there's so not, it's not, but it's it not, important. it's not like we're hiding gay characters. Like they're very much present in our media now. Sure. You know, gay characters, gay actors, uh, lesbian actors, lesbian characters. Like, so much so that I thought she was crushing on the girl a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I, but it wasn't a girl. I, I was, it was a little it was bit. Just a, it was a femme boy or something. Yeah, so. like, super emo. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit confusing. But. Um, I mean, it was it was confusing insofar as I wasn't sure if it was a boy or a girl. It wasn't confusing about how I felt about that. Yeah. It was like, okay, whatever. Like, fine. Like, I didn't think twice about that. But all I'm saying is, like... The 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 sexual angle, I'm like, I, I'm not sure. Like, I guess it's what you're saying, which I just didn't but, care for it. It was like whatever. Why? I'm not sure why that's in there. It's, I guess intellectually, I understand like what you're saying, and so I get why it's in there intellectually. Emotionally, I'm just like, I wish this wasn't here. This is well, just wasting my time. I think also, um, I mean, I, I don't know what your experience was, but there was totally a lot of sexual repression in Asian culture. I grew up Catholic. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I still don't need that. Yeah, I grew up with a lot of sexual repression. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know it was okay to. I'm not gonna say this. Forget it. Y'all don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep that part to myself. We're gonna just like. Pfft. I had a lot of sexual repression myself. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. So, but like, as someone who is of the mindset that you should be comfortable to have these kinds of conversations yeah. with your kids at an earlier age than you think. Well, so that yeah, they are especially these days. Yes, because of the internet. Um, I still think that that's just, that was a cheap laugh. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that's why, I, I guess that's why I didn't care for it. Because, like, all the other laughs in the movie felt like good organic laughs that, like, made sense to me. But that one just felt cheap. And I'm like, all right, well. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was pretty heartwarming, like, with all the friends and stuff like that. And it's a story about yeah. embracing friendship, love from your family, love for yourself, standing up for yourself. I thought that was going to come back, by the way. What? Which is... She lied to her mom several times where she goes, oh, yeah, I just think of the people that I love and I'm cool. I'm copacetic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it never came up where 
She, She's like, she, actually, I was thinking of my friends. I wasn't thinking of you. Yeah, I, I suppose in an indirect way it came up, but it never overtly came up. As in, like, I wasn't thinking of you. I was lying because I'm afraid of you. And that would have made more sense if the mom was more of like an intense mom. I have never had a, hel a helicopter mom that was like spying on me at school through the window or anything like that. Well, you've I never experienced that, eh? I mean, I guess. Will you experience that? Uh, my best friend's mom was like that. And so since I was all her right. best friend, I was in proximity of that. All right, She's all like, right. whoa, your mom needs to calm down. She's like, yeah, I know. All right. Okay, I guess it's relatable then. I've never seen that before. No, you haven't? What I have seen are like, not in a bad way, and it wasn't even Asians. It was like just parents who were like, hall, um, not hall monitors, but like, you know, there's adults who volunteer at the school. Oh, like at the PTA, the bake sale. Well, like, or, like, like to, uh, for recess, for, for nutrition time, for breaks. Well, like they're out there with their, mic, with their like fancy uh, walkie talkies and whatnot. Oh, really? Want monitoring really? the kids and whatnot. We didn't have those. Our parents just yeah. dropped us off at school and we're like, okay, peace out. We'll Catholic see you later. School, Catholic school is free labor. They just hire the parents for free. <laughs> Volunteers, right? And so, but you, I always saw the same parents every day. I'm like, and you really love it here. Yeah. Um, you know, finding a purpose in life. But anyway, um, yeah, like I said, the the, uh, the animation style was different. Like, Pixar generally manages to do that, where they find a, a unique, different animation style for each film that they do. Yeah. I don't know that I was in love with it, but it was different, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, I thought it, like, embraced a lot of the, the cuteness from certain types of anime, like the big googly eyes when they're sure, super certainly. happy, like stuff like that, which I, I thought was really adorable and felt appropriate for the story. Well, w sure. It, it's, you know, in that, with that in mind, like we just got done watching The Boys Diabolical yesterday. And the one with Aquafina had an animation style that I thought could have suited this. Yeah. Although that was more 2D. This it is was 3D. 2D, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 that's probably neither here nor there. I think the thing that really modernizes this movie is the pop music. That is what makes it closest to our reality. Yeah. And the thing about the, the Pixar films that generally feels more magical, I guess, is that it feels like a little bit removed from our reality, if that makes any sense. Sure. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes me kind of feel like this is not really a Pixar film, if that makes remotely any sense. Like, you look at the lineup of other Pixar films, right? N n nothing else is set, like, v as modern as that. Yeah. And, and so... It sort of throws me off a little bit because it feels more akin to something we would have found with Disney or DreamWorks 10 years ago versus Pixar today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's, not, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just that when you put the Pixar branding in there, I'm, I'm expecting a certain vibe. And so I was, I thought that maybe once she turned into the fox. <laughs> <laughs> She's a red panda. I know. I thought it was going to go into this whole magical adventure or something, kind of like uh, Shang-Chi or something, you know, when he finds the hidden place in the forest. Like, yeah. I thought that, that that was sort of the direction this was going. And it's like, nope, we're just going to keep this here in the city. Just chilling in Toronto. And, and I'm like... Or Toronto. Wh what? Like, you're just going to... And she's just in high school? Like, in the military, the CIA, the NSA, the Canadian government's not getting involved, even though it's just, like, out in the open of this monstrous threat that's just there like hundred million dollars of hundred million dollars of damage to the stadium and no one's gonna look into it like no government agencies are gonna look in and be like yo what's this about why have we got a kaiju sized panda yeah. roaming around Toronto I, yeah that it was I know it's an animation and it's supposed to be magical but you have so many real world elements that I was just like confused and scratching my head I'm like hold on so wait this is in the real world. This is where she's in school and like normal stuff, except no cops, except no government. That's the idea. Am I overthinking this? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay. okay. Well, I, I, I just thought that she was going to get whisked off on a magical adventure like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or something. I didn't properly watch the trailer. So you watched this without me, I think. Did, I definitely watched it. And yeah. I just, I was just very, I was honestly really excited for this because of the story and, and because, you know, it being an Asian story. Coco, okay? Like Coco is, is kind of like what I thought this might end up being like. Sure. You know, because yeah. he goes off on this magical journey to another realm. And that was a film that I also really enjoyed. I bawled my eyes yeah, out. Yeah, I love that yeah. movie. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's what I sort of expected. And so 
It, it, it usurped my expectations pretty hard. It, it usurped my expectations, and I'm not sure that it usurped it in the best of ways. I'm still letting it sit with me. So I'm not going to do another review. But I'm saying maybe I'll come around to it more if I watch it again. I'll be like, all right, now that I'm used to this movie. You didn't think that it had any similarity to Inside Out at all? I liked Inside Out way more. I know you liked Inside Out way more. I thought, I mean, I thought that, that was, was a far superior that movie. That was a, a very good film. But I thought that, you know, the aspect of things changing within you. But there was no... No, was kind there, of similar. This, this film lacked that structural point of no return when, like, Luke, Luke discovers his uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt whatever are dead. Now he's got to go become a Jedi. Right. Um, uh, and then in Inside Out, when, when Joy has to go on this adventure in order to save the... You know, like, she literally goes on an adventure and up when Carl um, set, takes the house off out of the city, you know, to the hills. Like, there's, like, this adventure that generally happens and it's called a point of no return where the character, like, can't turn back. He, he or she is going this direction now. Yeah. And I, I felt like I never really got that here because it just stayed within the confinement of the school. And I think I understand why they did that. It's just that because it's Pixar, I was expecting that and I never really... It took me a minute to get used to, oh, we're just staying here. Yeah, and I think that's why I kind of felt like, although I had fun with it, it did kind of feel a little bit like an after-school special. Well, literally. W yeah. How which it took is, place after school, yeah. Yeah, which isn't really what I, I expected. Well, I mean, maybe there's an element of this was produced, uh, you know, and, and, and animated during pandemic. And so that sort of hindered some of the ability to do this right. I don't know. I, I you know. don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I, I, because I know that with like, I know that pandemic took its toll on a lot of productions yeah. and, and including animation. And so there was a lot of films that like had to go about things differently and, and they had to make a lot of concessions. I know that with Matt Reeves, as from what I understand, was directing Batman in ways that direct, most directors don't have ever have to work you know, because it's pandemic and these social distancing and whatnot. So I have to be forgiving of that, you know, with that in mind. But anyway, sure. um, you guys, I apologize that this is so long winded. If you're still here, hopefully you enjoyed this discussion and hopefully you didn't, we didn't make you too mad or me. Uh, Char's usually nicer. And so yeah, hopefully I didn't make you too mad. Uh, but thanks for hanging out nonetheless. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. If you're watching this on Patreon, thanks so much for supporting us here. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Cook. Peace out.